What is a dude ranch? A dude ranch is a western style vacation that is pure Americana, where you get to pretend you are a cowboy for a week. Say hello cows! Then you can say get going cows! Get along little doggies! You ride horses and sit around campfires and do all that cool western stuff you always wanted to. Of course, you know, I'm the carpenter who believes a hammer is the answer to every question. I'm a dude rancher, so I think dude ranching is perfect for everybody. I think dude ranching and families are synonymous in many people's minds. It's that old-fashioned, everybody finds something to do. and. Uh, people can can find their own way through the vacation. Families get to have a relaxed, together experience as much as they want it to be. But it's also a great place for singles to come and not feel alone, and couples to get away. And it's just all built around real experiences, surrounded by beautiful country, with Western hospitality at core, and of course horses. Dude ranches are also called guest ranches. It can be a little confusing, but they're the exact same thing. One of the things that really sets dude ranches apart from other types of vacations is that people go back year after year to the same place. This allows guests to bond with the owners, the wranglers, and other guests. My name is Elliot Baker and I'm coming from Finland. I've been living there for the last seven years, uh, raising a family there. I have a wife and two kids. I'm originally from Seattle, Washington. And I started coming to the ranch, well, I was born in 1976 in September and I came to the ranch in November of 1976. So I'm 40 years old now and I've missed a couple of years here and there in my late 20s, early 30s, but basically coming to Tanky Verde Ranch for 40 years. I grew up here, I learned how to ride my horse here, I learned how to uh, trail a mountain bike here, had my first kiss here. How many horses we got saddled more? Fifteen. You kidding me? Fifteen horses. <laughs> well I guess that ain't too bad. Beach saddling fifty I guess. Okay so a dude ranch is like an American name for a holiday horse riding location. So you get to go horse riding, shooting, archery, team penning, and cows in this pen. And um, you live in this fantastic location where you've got like the saloon and the post office. It's, I mean, this is the unique thing about this place is that it's all set up like your traditional Wild West scene. It's like Disneyland for cowboys. Um, so yeah, basically, it's a riding holiday and you get fantastic food, brilliant accommodation, and it's a whole lot of fun. Ranches are great for adults and kids. Some ranches even have special kids programs where they teach them how to ride horses in addition to a bunch of other fun activities. A lot of ranches have little petting zoos with a variety of farm animals like chickens and goats. I came here because my grandparents wanted to meet up and have like some family time. Yeah, we do a lot of activities like going to the pool and playing tennis and fishing and stuff like that. And we do trails with the horses and lessons too. Dude ranches are a really neat vacation spot because once you come here, all of your fellow guests are in the same exact spot. You go and do the same activities together, so you make new friends instantaneously. The great thing about a ranch vacation is once you arrive, you don't have to worry about anything. It's all figured out for you. Your meals, activities, it's all scheduled out. You can participate in as much or as little as you want. It's all about relaxing. Meals are always a highlight at a ranch. 
Of course they have the cowboy basics like steak and potatoes, but you'll also find they now cater to vegetarians as well. And don't forget about the best part of dinner, dessert. There's almost always dessert and as you know, calories don't count on vacation. As far as drinking goes, some ranches have liquor licenses and others don't. The way it usually works is, guests can bring their own alcoholic drinks to the ranch or the ranch may have their own bar, in which case you can usually just put the drinks on your tab. In the evening, they may have a campfire to roast marshmallows or maybe a country music singer. After an amazing night's sleep, you will wake up very excited to start your new life as a cowboy. Every good day starts with a good breakfast, and ranch breakfasts are down home cooking. Expect pancakes, bacon and eggs, toast, and fresh OJ, along with great cowboy coffee. That means extra strong. For the vegans, you might get some grits, oatmeal, potatoes, or a nice fruit plate. After you're done eating, you can go back to your cabin and get all decked out in your cowboy gear. Put on your boots, sunscreen, bug spray, grab your camera, water bottle, rain jacket, and of course, put on that brand spanking new cowboy hat. So this is our corral. So for all of your rides, you'll come down here and meet right under this willow tree at those benches. Then the Wranglers, once they've got your horse ready, they're gonna call your name. You're gonna walk into the corral area, get up on the mounting blocks. We'll get you on your horse, adjust your stirrups, and you'll be ready for a great ride. If you've never ridden before, don't worry about it. They always give an informative tutorial about how to stop and start your horse, turn it and keep it from eating while on the trail. Now you're about to head out on a scenic trail ride. Depending on how many people are at the ranch and what their riding abilities are, there may be just one ride that goes out or a whole bunch of different groups that go out on different trails. Each riding group will have a wrangler in the lead. It's usually a single file line behind your wrangler, unless possibly you're at a real working cattle ranch, in which case there may not even be a trail. So then you just head on out. So I'm Brianne here from Hawaii. Um, I'm a travel blogger, so I just thought it'd be cool to come out and check out the ranch. It's my first time actually staying at a guest ranch, so I'm excited to kind of come out and see what it's all about. The rides are a great place to meet other guests and chat about where you're from, what you do, and all the normal small talk. And each ride, you may have the chance to meet totally different people. Once you get back from your ride, you'll probably have a little bit of time to go back to your cabin and clean up a bit, or just relax before lunch. Once you hear that lunch bell ring though, it's time to head on down for some good eating. After lunch, there's typically an afternoon ride or a different activity that you can choose to do, such as fishing, hiking, mountain biking, whitewater rafting, archery, or skeet shooting.
Well, I think dude ranches are built on repeat guests. And, and once they get that experience, they feel like the moment they step back on that ranch, they're back on vacation. And they're, they're not having to find their way or learn about what's going on or, or um, all the things that vacations can end up being sort of stressful. So dude ranches, if they're doing their job right, have a lot of repeat guests. And here at White Stang, we have people, we've been here 51 years. We're, we're into our 51st year now, our family. The ranch goes back as a cattle ranch over 100 years and as a dude ranch 71. And we have people that have actually been coming seven years longer than we've been here. And now, of course, the first generation's gone, part of the second generation too, and, and it's second, third, and fourth generations now. And, and so to know those people, and of course, the other thing for me personally, at, at my age, I, I get to see those, those five-year-olds who now are bringing their five-year-olds and remembering when they were taking their first ride and their parents were were so excited that the little Ben was on this big horse and somehow finding his way around managing this big animal and now those people are, are bringing their own kids and, and uh, it makes you feel a little old sometimes but it's also awfully fun and not something most vacation destinations get to experience. All right. All right, guys. Well, my name's Alyssa. I know I've met you guys before, and this is Sis. She's going to kind of give me a hand throughout this. Um, this is what's called an orientation speech. It's just kind of a basic safety speech. We're going to go over safety out on the trails, safety around our horses, as well as how to operate our horses. And at the end, I'll kind of give you guys a little bit of an overview to kind of what expect. All right. So first off, I'm going to kind of introduce you to your equipment that you'll be using. This is called your halter and your lead rope. Um, this is gonna stay on your horse through the entire time that you guys are riding, just in case we need to tie up for anything. And so usually this is just gonna be looped up on your saddle horn, just kind of something like that. And going down the trail, if you guys see that kind of starting to come loose or um, sometimes they'll kind of fall to the ground, just let one of your wranglers know and they'll just stop real quick and fix it. This is what's called your bridle and your reins. These are essentially your steering wheel for the horse. The reins are connected to a metal bit that sits in their mouth. And this bit is how they're gonna feel the cues that you're gonna give them for turning, stopping, that kind of stuff. All right, so this is your saddle horn, your pommel, and this is the cantle. Both the saddle or the cantle and the saddle horns are great tools to hang on to going uphill, downhill. Those are really good balance points. Um, this is called your stirrups. This is where your feet are gonna go. And tomorrow when you guys all meet your horses, um, we'll get these all adjusted to you. Underneath here, this is called your cinch or your girth. Um, this is pretty much what keeps your saddle on the horse. So the Wranglers, before you guys hop on, are gonna check it and make sure it's nice and snug. And then we're also gonna check it again about 20 minutes out on the trail because our horses have kind of learned a little trick. They'll hold their breath until when you cinch it up the first time, then as soon as you guys get, off, get on, they'll let it out, which loosens up your cinch a little bit. This is called a breast collar. This keeps your saddle from sliding back. And this back cinch is just kind of something extra that I have on mine. Um, your guys really won't have these. These just kind of keep your saddle from popping up in the back when you go really fast. So what you want to do is you want to take your left foot, put it up in the stirrup. Then you want to bounce up and get as close as you can to them. Um, some people will try to kind of launch from out here. That's not the most effective way, I'll tell you that. So you want to bounce up, grab your reins if you can. From here, you can either grab the saddle horn or grab a chunk of mane. Um, don't worry about hurting them, grabbing the mane. There's no nerve en endings up here. So while she can kind of feel me pull, that's not gonna hurt her like if we were to grab our own hair. So if you can, grab your reins. Then you wanna bounce a couple times, stand up, swing your leg over. Of course, we want you guys to keep one hand on the reins while you're taking the picture. We don't want you just kind of dropping the reins and then snapping away, um, cause then you just kind of lost the steering wheel. Be like driving down the road and be like, oh, that looks pretty. <laughs> and trying to take a picture of that. It's not, not the best. A cowboy is a cattle herder that wrangles cows on a ranch. Cowboys have become a thing of legend over the years, in part due to the popularity of exciting Western movies. The real life of a cowboy isn't that glamorous at all. 
Long days in the saddle or not. Awful food and a hard bed if you get a bed at all. But hey, everybody still wants to be a cowboy. He got, he, his son was trying to get into rodeo and then somehow he was roping and the calves or steers or something and he got his fingers in the way and he lost two or three of his fingers. Dude ranches started out way back in the late 1800s. People from the east, called dudes by westerners, wanted to go out and see what it was really like to be a cowboy. Dudes are frequent visitors at the teepee villages on the Crow and Cheyenne Indian reservations, friendly neighbors of the Bighorn ranches. The ranches offered guests the chance to get out of the big city and into the great outdoors and enjoy horseback riding, fishing, hiking, swimming, roping, and even go to some rodeos. But while we were there, managing Jackson Lake Lodge, my wife and I would get out and, and run around over that country a little bit, and we, we heard about this lodge, this dude ranch, that Dad Turner and his, his elderly wife, they're both in their 70s probably, early 70s, that it was up for sale, and so we went down there to see it. And the Heart Six Ranch is a beautiful, it's in a beautiful location, and beautiful view of the Tetons, and we fell in love with it right away. And so we met with with Dad Turner and his wife, and talked it over. And uh, of course, we're, I was playing in the NBA, so we had a little money, and we made a deal with them, and uh, we we bought the Heart Six Ranch. That's how we got started up there. And we had uh, hikes that we'd go on, and we'd visit uh, some of the cattle ranches around that people wanted to go to, and I knew most of the ranchers, and, and we'd play, of course, games around the ranch. We had a volleyball net set up, and I had a basketball hoop set up. About how many dude ranches were operating in your area in the 1950s? Oh, we probably had 15 or so. Okay, so in it was that still a big area. industry. Yeah. It's hard to believe, but the Paradise Ranch used to only cost $2.50 a day. Come on out to the Paradise Ranch and meet honest-to-goodness cowboys who sing, rope, shoe, pack, and ride Bronx. And one night I heard this scream sound like somebody was, being, somebody was getting killed and my cabin was fairly close to where the, the couple, three of these girls were living. And, Oh boy, she was absolutely, and when I opened the door, this girl had come running from my cabin, and she didn't have anything on but her nightgown and what have you, and jumped into my arms, and yelled and screamed, the grizzly bear under our cabin. Well, of course, the grizzly bear can't get under those cabins to start with. I said, just calm down now and tell me what the problem is. So she started explaining it, and I guessed pretty quick what, I, what it was. I'd seen run into this situation before <laughs> with cabins. What had happened was this old porcupine had got underneath there, and he, he, some got his probably the noise up above got his quills stand straight up, and he was rubbing on the floor, and and the girls heard that, and they thought there was a grizzly bear under there, <laughs> and she was so I went over, and we finally got him out of there. I think I did away with the porcupine, but. Uh, that was quite an experience. And my wife said, what on earth's going on here? This girl jumping in your arms like hell. I said, you'd probably do the same thing if you really thought there was a grizzly bear under your cabin. <laughs> That's great. <right. laughs> Western movies had really romanticized the cowboy, and the newly created railroad was very eager to transport all these vacationers to the ranches all over the West. Also, because of the big financial crash and the Great Depression, many ranches were struggling to make ends meet and were more than happy to have people come out and pay to see what ranch life was all about. Railroads like the Northern Pacific and Santa Fe were one of the biggest advertisers of dude ranches. Come out to the West and be a cowboy, or meet a cowboy, as it was for some single East Coast ladies.
There were many dude ranches just outside of Reno, Nevada that promoted themselves to high society East Coast divorcees as a place to meet a handsome cowboy. Today, Dude Ranch is trying to carry on the same traditions of Western hospitality and exciting cowboy adventures as they did when they originated. About 20 years ago, there were around 500 Dude Ranches in North America. Today, they are less than 250. We're going to take an incredible journey across the United States from the bottom to the top. Along the way, we're going to visit 12 totally different dude ranches, from real working cattle ranches all the way up to the fanciest ranch resorts. We begin in southern Arizona, near the Mexican border at Rancho de la Osa. Located in southern Arizona near the Mexican border and surrounded by 117,000 acres of the Buenos Aires Wildlife Refuge is one of the country's oldest ranches, Rancho de la Osa. Most ranches allow guests to groom their horses. It's really relaxing and a nice way to build a bond with your new friend. Part of the magic of staying at a dude ranch is reliving all the history that that ranch has hidden within it. Each ranch is unique and each has its own story to tell. By staying there, you are becoming a part of that story. This ranch is so old that the famous Mexican general Pancho Villa actually attempted to take over the property during the Mexican Revolution. He fired several cannonballs at the hacienda which were later found embedded in the stucco. The property itself dates back to the 1700s and the first building on the ranch was erected by Jesuit priests as a trading post to exchange goods with the local tribes. It is believed to be the oldest continually used building in Arizona. The property was later included in the Gadsden Purchase and bought by Colonel William Spencer Sturgis who established it as La Osa Ranch. History buffs will love the Franklin Roosevelt Presidential Suite and the Hubert Humphrey VP Room. And for the serious Western movie fans, there's the John Wayne Suite. The Duke always tried to stay at the ranch every time he filmed around Tucson. Like most ranches, horseback riding is a main activity, but there's also a bunch of other things to do as well. There are great hiking and biking trails, incredible desert wildlife to photograph, sport shooting, and super exciting off-road tours. People are often scared about horseback riding, and that's understandable, but there's nothing to be afraid of. Depending on your horseback riding ability, the Wranglers will match you to a horse that suits you best. So, as they say on the border, amigos, adios, we're on to the next ranch. And uh, we've had a blast. Um where we are now, the White Stallion kind of came about because of uh, 
I don't know to what extent we tell this story. Well, he can edit it, so. We got kicked out of the Circle Z ranch. We got kicked out of the Circle Z. For being extra effervescent we, personalities. We, we, we had a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun. We okay. didn't do any damage. It wasn't like we were reckless. We just had a lot of fun. It was and laughter, good, good friends, was, and I guess it good was times. a little more than they wanted at that time. The next ranch we're going to is also in southern Arizona, and it's called Tombstone Monument Ranch. The ranch is located just a few miles outside the famous cowboy town of Tombstone. If you saw the movie Tombstone starring Kurt Russell, then you know all about it. Wyatt Earp and his brothers end up getting into a legendary gunfight at the OK Corral. The ranch itself is very unique in that it was built to look just like an old west town. There's a dirt main street that's lined with all the old shops and storefronts that you might expect to see, like a blacksmith, a jail, and of course, a saloon. The great thing is, most of these themed rooms are available for guests to stay in. A few times a week, the ranch has a really cool old school chuck wagon breakfast. The kind where you sit around a campfire and have coffee and grub, while listening to old stories about Tombstone and all its crazy cowboys. Themed rooms make it really fun and definitely add to the mystique that you are living in the Old West. When you're at a ranch, life goes on as normal all around you. Chores have to get done, horses fed, and fences mended. My name's Kevin and I'm from North Yorkshire in England and this is my fourth time here it's just an amazing place to be the horses are great the wranglers are, are fantastic oh i've done the shooting there's a guy called arizona bill he comes in and he takes you out to a little range and you fire a winchester and two um, handguns and then you get to play with a shotgun uh, and that's brilliant i've done clay pigeon shooting at home but I've never fired a shotgun from the hip. <laughs> and that was, that was pretty cool. Trail rides go out a couple times a day. You can see historic mines, old railroad trestles, and even ancient Indian petroglyphs. Other fun activities include team penning, archery, and shooting. So we had a go at team penning, so when you put the cow into this pen as a team, so you put it together to do it. And if I could do that in reality, in the real world, like my bum would hurt after a while. And I'm sure those cows would be difficult to work with and the wranglers would be characters, but that'd be a whole new experience. I'd really love to try it. Back at the ranch, when the sun goes down, that's when the real fun begins. Order yourself a whiskey at the bar or try your luck at some cards. Well folks, it's time to skedaddle and head to the next ranch. Riding and the horses, and they bond with their horses. I think they bond with their horses sometimes more than they bond with us. 
I mean, the, the, the Facebook and the emails that go back and forth about their horse and how's the horse doing and send them, sending them carrots and, and stuff. It's just, it's just the whole experience of them coming back to a place, one, they know, but two, they know is boundless as far as experiences go. My name, my name is Alan Peck and I'm from East Sussex in England. I first went to the White Stallion Ranch in Tucson and then we discovered the Tanque Verde Ranch and now we're very greedy, we go to both of them. Well, it's just lovely discovering horses late in life. More pensioners should do it because we just have so much fun. We love the horses, we love the atmosphere, we love the Wild West. We go to the rodeo and we go to Tombstone and get involved in the cowboy scene and we go to the old film studios and we soak it all up because it's so different to what we've got at home. And so far this has been probably the best experience I've had just riding horses and with the kids club it's just very nice the way they organize it. If you're in kids club you go and sign in and then you stay with the kids club all day and they bring you to lunch, you watch a movie during lunch but in between the day you have in the morning you either have a trail ride which is you go in the desert or you have a lesson on horses and you actually get to pick your horses which is very nice. So. Like, my favorite horse is called Trigger, and I usually ask for Trigger, and I usually get Trigger, so... The next ranch we're going to is in Tucson, Arizona, and it's called Tanca Verde Ranch. Tanca Verde is one of the country's oldest ranches, getting started way back in the 1800s as a cattle ranch. Even before that, the area was settled by the Pima Indians because of the abundance of water available. The term Tanca Verde means green tank or pool in Spanish. started in 1868 as a cattle ranch and um, was a sort of an outpost of Fort Lowell, which is a big fort in the city of Tucson. And it was established because at that particular time, patrols came out this far and was able to protect it from the Apache raids that were dominated this area for many, many years. And so it was a very successful ranch at that particular time. You couldn't ask for a more stunning desert backdrop. The ranch borders the Saguaro National Park, which gives guests virtually unlimited outdoor opportunities. Tanca Verde is a ranch resort and one of the nicest in the country. Amenities include a spa, pool, tennis courts, meeting facilities, event spaces, and even a kids club. There are many different lodging options for guests depending on the size of your group. Most of the buildings look like traditional adobe casitas that overlook the National Park and the surrounding Santa Catalina and Rincon Mountains. Over the years, dude ranches have really had to up their game with what they offer. The kids program at Tanca Verde is a perfect example of that. In addition to the horseback riding, they participate in tennis, hiking, arts and crafts, swimming, and nature programs. The horseback riding program is first class. They have nearly 200 horses that they saddle up each day for guests, and they offer a bunch of different rides to keep it interesting. There's the mountain adventure ride, the sunset ride, the walking or loping ride. Loping means that you ride really fast. And of course, everyone's favorite, the breakfast ride. 
The breakfast ride leaves the ranch corral and heads up to the old homestead where you feast on their world-famous homemade blueberry pancakes, ranch-style eggs, bacon, coffee, and fresh orange juice. After a long day in the saddle, the first place you will want to visit is the Doghouse Saloon. Here you can get a prickly pear margarita and share your incredible adventures with all the other guests. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this ranch. Let's head to the next. We've done fast rides, slow rides, um, fast rides, <laughs> <laughs> and fast rides. <laughs> In the and they keep you with the same horse, so you get to learn your horse, right. and, and it's a lot better for you and the horse. We like to go fast. <laughs> if you're a horse rider, it's more fun Yeah. than, than walking in a straight line. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, the food was so good. It was scrambled eggs with sausage in it, and the seasoned potatoes, and blueberry pancakes. Blueberry pancakes, yeah. And they were, they they were, were really delicious. good. Yes. The next ranch we're going to is the White Stallion Ranch in Tucson, Arizona. The ranch is ideally located right next to the Saguaro National Park, which makes for stunning scenery and incredible sunsets. The White Stallion has become an icon in the dude ranching industry. Run by the same family for several generations, they have set the bar for what a dude ranch experience should be. Um, so my name is David True. I actually grew up right here on the Whitestein Ranch. My family's owned the ranch for well, coming on 52 years now. Um, so I spent my whole life growing up here, growing up with the horses. Always knew I wanted to do this. Um, so as I got older, things just kind of fell into place. The White Stallion does a fantastic job giving guests a real western experience but with all the nice amenities a lot of us have come to expect in a vacation. They have spa services, a fitness center, a pool and a hot tub, tennis courts and more. But like at any ranch, the horseback riding is the main focus. They offer a wide range of different rides, many of which are very creative. Guests can enjoy desert rides and mountain rides, but there's also a wine and cheese ride and even a beer and Cheetos ride. One of the favorites at the ranch is the breakfast ride, where they go way out into the desert for a real down-home breakfast, cowboy style. When you're not on a horse or in the pool, you can go rock climbing or hiking with a guide. And for kids, there's a million things to do. There's a huge rec room with games, pool, foosball, and even a movie theater that shows old westerns. There's also a very cool petting zoo. They've got a guy named Loop Rollins that is absolutely amazing. He does trick roping, whip cracking, and gun spinning. The kids love it. 
Whether it's a big buffet, a barbecue, or a really fun breakfast ride out into the desert, you will not leave hungry. This ranch has one of the best cowboy bars ever. You can actually sit on a real saddle. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for the White Stallion Ranch. We're on to the next place. That's uh, probably one of my best memories of, of going to the Dude Ranch is we, we'd gone to several that week and we found ourselves at one of the smaller ranches, kind of a family owned ranch, and we're having breakfast outside one morning and this long dirt road is visible from there and all you can see is this dust coming down the road and eventually this pickup truck pulls up and says, hey Brad, some of your cows are on my land and it's me and two other guests and Brad the owner and Brad just tells everybody hurry up and finish breakfast we got to go fix my fence. He said, go ahead and lope on out there once we found the break in the fence and we see this black spot way out in the distance and he tells me he says you and Dave lope out there and go get that bull and I'm thinking this is exactly what I want to do right this is the story I want to tell everybody until we start loping and I realize I got to hold on to this. I've never done that before and I got to hold on to this horse for, for dear life. But you get your rhythm and you know you, you get used to the speed and you find your rhythm. So that was fun until we got to the bull and then the bull looks a lot bigger than he did way out in the distance. He's not a little black dot anymore. He's this huge animal. And you realize that we're in his world now and he's just looking at us like, I'll leave when I want to leave. Not because, I'm not leaving because you guys are here. <laughs> and trying to figure out what we're supposed to do to, to convince this, you know, this huge animal to get up and politely come back into the fence line you know so that was a fun you know we get there and of course we're laughing with each other and joking and hooting and hollering at the bull until he politely allows us to think we pursued you know made him go back into the, into the fence but he really did it on his own <laughs> but we felt I felt accomplished and when I went home and told people I went out and mended fences and then brought a bull back in it sounds like I'm a real cowboy when in reality I was just a tourist <laughs> but it was The next ranch we're headed to is the Lost Valley Ranch in Colorado. ranch is tucked away in a little valley that might have been lost at one time, but is now available for everyone to enjoy. You know, uh, a fairly high-end but authentic experience, and honestly I just love it because it's a different world. I mean, it's the same people, reason people like to watch Westworld on TV. It's just a chance to, I don't know, connect with a past that's totally different than, you know, our everyday lives, you know, in offices and subdivisions. And, whatnot and you know it adds an element of adventure and romance and you know you get to dress up and uh, just be somebody else kind of for a for week.
The scenic trail rides wind all through the valley and up into the mountains. There's nothing quite like being on a horse and just cruising along and talking to your friends. In addition to the horseback riding, there's fishing, tennis, hay rides, campfires, and a big swimming pool. One of the funniest things that's happened recently, um, there's a wrangler that's here for a year. He, he just left before fall. His name is Luke Burton. And uh, him and I went out into the meadows. We had to get a couple horses. And then one of the horses we had to get was a colt. Um, the colts are young horses. These are three-year-olds. Um, just spooky. It's the nature of being young. And they're typically really hard to catch. And so we, we went out there and we kind of cornered this one and Luke went and he wrapped his arms around the neck to try to get his halter on. And when he did that, that, that colt decided he was going to rear and try to get away. Well, good old Luke, he decided he was going to hold on. He was going to try as hard as he could to hold on. And Luke's 6'5". He's a big old boy. And that colt, when he reared, he just lifted Luke off the ground. And when that colt reared, he went like that and just swung Luke completely into the fence. It was just like this. Just smacked him into the fence and dropped him. Unfortunately, we have to leave the Lost Valley Ranch and head to the next place. But you can always come back and visit on your own. The next ranch we're going to visit is the North Fork Ranch in Shawnee, Colorado. Fork Ranch gets its name by being located on the North Fork of the South Platte River. Like most ranches, everyone eats together family style in the main lodge room. I think the tradition of the Old West is the the hospitality of it, um, the, the, the truth and honesty in a handshake. Every ranch seems to have something that sets it apart, and this ranch's claim to fame is its incredible fishing. Many guests come to the ranch just to fish. Here you can spend endless hours just outside the back door casting for rainbows, browns, and cutthroat trout. The ranch's location right next to a national forest makes it ideal for scenic horseback rides, hiking, and exciting river rafting. For the real adventurous, you can try your luck at tracking down the elusive jackalope. Guests have a real variety of lodging options. There are rooms in the main lodge, several cabins scattered around the ranch, and one really unique stone home that sits just above the river. One of the most popular places on the ranch during the summer is the pool and jacuzzi. 
kids will absolutely love the petting zoo with chickens and goats. I think people who come and don't want a horseback ride, but give it a try, figure out that this really is a lot of fun and it's kind of neat. And uh, We also take a lot of time to instruct them and get them over that scared feeling so there's a level of confidence that they start to develop and, and they get a feeling of that relationship with a horse. And, Well, hopefully you enjoyed the North Fork Ranch. It's time for us to get on our horses and head out to the next one. And at one point, we have a pond about a mile down that road, and we had a cow that kept going around the pond, so one of the wranglers was trotting along the side of it um, on this really majestic horse named Bunsen. He's a gorgeous looking horse, but he's super nervous all the time and likes to do dumb things. And he decided that the shortest way to get to the cow was across the pond. So without any warning, he planted his feet, pivoted, and leapt straight into the middle of the pond. Got it. The next ranch we're headed to is the Coulter Lake Ranch near Rifle, Colorado. Sounds super western, doesn't it? If you are looking to get away from it all with some serious seclusion, then this just might be the right ranch for you. This place is amazing. It's located right on a little lake in the massive White River National Forest. They are totally off the grid and use solar panels and hydroelectricity to generate most of their power. You know, I think probably one of the, the biggest misconceptions is that if you've never ridden a horse, um, you know, that the ranch vacation isn't for you. I think probably about half of our guests have either never ridden or may have been on a horse, you know, as a youth. Um, all the horses, you know, they're used to the trails, they're, they're good at what they do. Um, and that's what we're really trained to do is to let people ride, enjoy the mountains from the back of a horse. Um, you know, and if you're truly a, not ready to ride or not interested, there's a lot of other activities to do, whether it's enjoying the lake here, whether it's reading a book on the deck, um, whitewater rafting, there's golf, there's a little bit of everything um, in the air. Like many ranches, their lodging consists of several cabins hidden amongst the trees, but what makes this so special is that they are truly vintage. They are even open in the winter for snowmobiling, which is kind of rare for a guest ranch. With the lake right at your front door, when you're not busy being a cowboy, you can canoe, fish, and swim. There's also hiking and horseshoes, and in the evenings, some cozy campfires. It can't be stressed enough how awesome dude ranches are for little kids. Imagine being able to experience all that nature has to offer and getting to be around horses at such a young age. When it's time to ride, head on down to the corral. 
After the Wranglers get you all settled up, you can take off into the stunning White River National Forest. Dude Ranch vacations are all about being outside and experiencing the sounds and smells of nature. Well, friends, we can't dilly-dally all day. We've got other ranches to see. Time to head out. The next ranch we're headed to is the Heart Six Ranch, just outside of Jackson Hole. It's probably about uh, six or seven miles to the Heart Six Ranch from Moran. Mm -hmm. The Heart Six is one of the oldest dude ranches in the country, and with over a hundred years under its belt, you can be pretty sure that there are some tall tales being told. This is some real vintage footage of the ranch from back in the 50s. The Heart Six Lodge was all modern. The rooms in it, we had quite a few rooms upstairs and downstairs, but uh, the only one cabin that was modern. We had about seven or eight that worked. And eventually we moved all those cabins out and back up into the timber, kind of out of the site. But I got along fine, and I thank the good Lord that he took me up there, and I was able to find the Heart Six Ranch, which Marilyn and I lived on for nearly 20 years, and our kids grew up there. They still offer incredible hiking, horseback riding, and fishing, just like in the old days. The beauty of a dude ranch vacation is that you're outside, in nature, breathing in all that fresh air, and really living life to its fullest. Not much has changed since the early days, other than a few added amenities. The Heart Six still has all the character it used to, and a whole lot more. These days you can enjoy all the history of the ranch, but with hot water, indoor plumbing, cozy cabins, and Wi-Fi. Dude to ranches aren't just fun vacations. They keep the traditions of the cowboy alive. Without dude ranches, we would most certainly lose a very important part of American history. They've got a great section in the main lodge that talks about all the history of the ranch and the cowboy way of life. The quaint little town of Jackson Hole is just a short drive away and a really fun day trip. Dude ranches are just great places to unwind and really relax. It's a chance to get your kids away from the video games and get back to the basics. The nearby Yellowstone National Park with all of its incredible wildlife and geysers is an absolute must-see attraction. And some woman here not like, too long back tried to put her kid on the, picture, on the back of a black bear and take a picture of him. It's unbelievable. The most famous geyser of all and aptly named Old Faithful has erupted a total of more than one million times since Yellowstone became the world's first national park in 1872. And I said, well, we rent five dollars a cabin. Five dollars for this? And I said, well, I could see right off she was thoroughly disgusted. And I said, well, now, ma'am, I said, uh, didn't like me calling her ma'am either. I said, you, you misunderstood me. The $5 isn't for the, the cabin. Oh, I said, the cabin's free. But I said, it's that view out there we're charging you for. Mm -hmm. She slammed and got in that car. Off she went. <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of happy she left.
Well, unfortunately, it looks like we have to leave this paradise and head to the next range. The next ranch we're going to go to is located just outside of Cody, Wyoming, on the border of Yellowstone National Park. It's called the Shoshone Lodge and Guest Ranch. This historical lodge was built way back in 1924 by Henry Dollum, Park County's very first sheriff. His grandson Mike now operates the lodge and ranch and continues its long family tradition. I'm uh, Mike Christensen, this is my wife Betsy. and uh, We got involved with uh, doing dude ranch and lodging uh, because my family had uh, started this business uh, in, the, in 1924. Uh, my great grandfather was the first sheriff of Park County and Cody, and friends with Buffalo Bill, and, and where we're uh, so close to Yellowstone National Park, he, he started a guest ranch here in a sawmill. And he this is Henry Dallum, who originally built the lodge along with an historical photo. Uh, we had been married six months, and I said, uh, Honey, I, I know you love me and we're moving to Cody. <laughs> and uh, she had never even seen the, the guest ranch here. And uh, it was a great sport and we've been doing it for 12 years now and uh, still enjoying it. Shoshone is exactly what you picture in your mind when you think of an old classic National Park Lodge. It's so picturesque, you will feel really proud to have your kids experience it. The Wranglers need to get up really early, gather the horses they need for the day, then they brush them and saddle them for the guests to ride. This procedure plays out at nearly every ranch the exact same way. Y'all want to hop up on the porch and bring some horses for you? Uh, Johnny. In addition to the incredibly scenic horseback riding, hiking, and fishing, there's also Yellowstone National Park just three miles away. Guests can stay in the main lodge or there are a bunch of cabins hidden amongst the trees. Some have little kitchens in them for longer stays or you can always eat in the main lodge restaurant which has a full menu. Hopefully you enjoyed this little look into a real classic Americana lodge and guest ranch. If you're ever in Wyoming around Cody, be sure to stop into the Shoshone Lodge and say hi to Mike and Betsy. The next ranch we're headed to is the Diamond D Ranch in Stanley, Idaho.
Yeah, my name is Tom Demarest. I drifted in this way in about 1951. You wouldn't think I was only 35, would you? The ranch is completely off the grid and gets its power from a hydroelectric generator. The only communication is by satellite phone and satellite-based internet. This place is way, way off the map. Nestled in the Frank Church wilderness and surrounded by the Salmon River Mountains, it is the definition of remote. They are, they're like people, they all have different personalities. Sonny's one of our best guide horses. He's really honest and sound. They actually use him for um, our hunting trips as well. So we'll go out and camp for a week or two and stay out in the woods. And he either ties or stays in a little corral. He's really good. We have um, Buckskin Dunn in there, his name's Billy. And a gentleman actually shot a wolf off of him at a dead run a few years ago. He didn't get it on film, but he tells the story every time he comes to visit. It's pretty cool. Like many ranches, the Diamond D is family owned and operated. The owners, Tom and Linda, have run the ranch for many years and are passing on their duties to their daughters now. Dude ranches are absolute heaven for kids. There are so many fun things to do and animals to play with. There are a wide variety of cabins and lodge rooms to choose from. Some are close to the main lodge, while others are more private and located down by the river. <laughs> the meals at the Diamond D are fantastic, and they do a great job accommodating any special requests like gluten-free or vegetarian. This is rhubarb pie. The rhubarb was picked this morning um, from the garden of the um, forest service over there. Uh, they have a beautiful patch of it. And so Linda and I went over and we picked it. And the activities at the ranch include horseback riding, fishing, hiking, canoeing, shooting, archery, and more. There's also a big pool and a hot tub. The ranch has a beautiful little chapel hidden in the woods that was hand-built by the owner, Linda, and her friends over 11 summers. He's a really good guide horse. He loves to lead. Um, if you have him in the back of the pack, he, he definitely tries to walk out and pass other horses. Um, he's a really great horse, though. He's really good for wrangling. He's one of my favorites. Well, an important thing as far as we're concerned, number one, this is a family operation. This isn't some big corporation out of Dallas or New York. Uh, we look after people the way we want to be looked after. Well, my friends, it looks like it's time to head on out and go to the next ranch. Riding along, and we ride along, and all of a sudden this big brown bear came out from behind a log, looked at us, and then took off, and we're like, Wow! And what did it do? It ran into a herd of elk. And we watched the elk scatter. And we were like, wow. this is awesome. And uh, it's experiences like that. And they happen. They happen. And it, 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 that was a great experience. But the experience that I, I was like a one-up from that, if, you, yeah, if there it is was such pretty, a thing. We're, we're going through these grasslands near Jackson, Wyoming. And it's just the Wrangler and Katie and myself, and we're going along. And it, it's peaceful, it, and you're looking at all it, the beautiful It's just scenery gorgeous, and, and we see a bison off in the distance. We go, oh, let's go check it out. So we start walking quietly, because you don't want to upset them. Right, I was going to use a different term, but you don't want to upset them because... We're in their territory. There. And they're not necessarily the brightest, and they head off into a, a direction, so we didn't want them coming at us. So we're, we're approaching them, and we're maybe 50, 100 yards away from this bison that we see standing there, 
and then all of a sudden it's tall grass these this grass comes almost up to the neck of the horse and then all of a sudden the other 300 stood up, stood up all at the same and time and we're like wow yeah it was just amazing exit stage left. also <laughs> exit quietly, right, as, quietly. <laughs> as safely as we can and we got out of there out in the west texas town of el paso i fell in love with the mexican girl the next ranch we're going to visit is the 4d longhorn guest ranch just outside of cascade idaho The 4D is located about 65 miles north of Boise. What makes this place so special is that it's a real working cattle ranch and it has longhorns. What real working cattle ranch vacation would be complete without a cattle drive? Come on, bring them up! Hi cows! The 4D is owned and operated by a real cowboy, Brad Ford. <laughs> okay. Hollywood. But if you do decide you want to help out around the ranch, don't worry. There's plenty of things that need to get done. Top of it last night, straddled it, and knocked this old gate off of here. It needs to be replaced, but I don't have time to do it right now. So this is what I'm doing. I'm fixing. It. Now, when I go to stop my horse, I want to slide my hand back to the bit and say "whoa" with a stiff arm. See how my stiff arm went all the way back to the bit? You know, he'll he'll stop with respect. A lot of times, when you just say "whoa," he'll stop on their own, and you don't have to really force any more issue to it. You have to do as much as you need to do, and no more. Whoa, relax, let them know they did good. The lodging consists of several pioneer-style cabins built in the spirit of the Old West. Additionally, there are also a few cozy rooms in the main lodge. Yeah, we're stopping to pick some huckleberries because we're going to make a pie later. <laughs> or no, huckleberry pancakes. Yeah, they're small, they're too good, they take a long time, but they are very good. Thank you. Oh, okay. And if I catch you eat them? <laughs> Let me eat them. <laughs> I'm going to pull a finger on them. <laughs> you can't eat huckleberries while you're picking them or you never get anywhere. Yeah. You'll enjoy ranch-style home-cooked meals, and if you're lucky, you might even get to pick the berries that go into your pancakes. Right across the room, running 90 mile an hour, taking 30 feet of jump. Ain't never been caught, and he ain't never been treed. Some folks say he looks a lot like me. <laughs> it just came out perfect. Well, we've got just one ranch left on our epic journey. We're headed north to Montana in Big Sky Country. Uh, we change people's lives, and it's, it's readily apparent with the families. But what happens is literally the kids learn to run free without looking over their shoulder every five minutes for, is it okay I'm here, is it okay I'm here, and giving permission to run free. The kids literally run free, and the parents learn to let go. It's a big dynamic that happens in the family. And there's an equalization that also happens when they ride, Typically, most of the time, they're 
riding abilities are fairly similar, fairly equivalent. And you'll hear the kids going down the trail, mom, you're holding the reins wrong, you hold them like this, or dad, your feet are in the stirrups wrong, you gotta put your heels down. And it equalizes the relationship, and it's a pretty cool thing. And when they do ride apart, and they come back together, the downtime they have apart is such high quality because the kids will come up and they'll say, you know what we did today? And the parents say, well, you know what we did today? And then getting back together, the quality of time spent is just, it's just off the charts. It's great, they love it. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's a great story. A gentleman and his girlfriend came from Scotland, didn't know one another. And uh, it's fun just to listen to the people from Scotland. Uh, but they hit it off at the ranch and two years later they came back and wanted to do a private wedding ceremony and this is where they did it with the background of the mountains and everything else and it was uh, it was quite a nice little ceremony they had the uh, the kilts on and everything i don't know what the ladies ones are called but it's, it's very similar i think there were six people and, and an officiant and they got married um, as luck would have it we had a um, campfire that night <laughs> The man was drinking quite a bit, um, talking tough now, and uh, we always do a branding at our campfires. And we brand leather gear and, and wood products and stuff like that with our Bar W um, logo. So he kept saying, I want to be branded with the Bar W, I want to be branded with the Bar W. So um, anyway, unbeknownst to him, I have a big brand about that big. He goes, I want to be branded, and he slapped his pocket like that. So um, what he didn't know is I had two of those things and one of them I stuck in an ice chest and the other I stuck in the fire where he could see it and uh, I asked uh, him to blindfold him because he was going to move and wreck it. And so he agreed and, and uh, he exposed the part that he wanted the brand on and had two guys holding him and I touched him with the cold one and of course he screamed and he, then he said a bad word because <laughs> he realized he'd been fooled. But it didn't leave any marks. <laughs>
The tents are really fun to stay in because they offer all the amenities of a nice cabin, but with the added excitement of vintage western living. There are bathrooms and showers just outside the tents. Even though horseback riding is a big part of it, there's also skeet shooting, there's archery, there's handgun shooting, there's kayaking, there's whitewater rafting, there's rodeos, there's square dancing, there's country singers around campfires. Dude ranches are kind of like western style summer camps. There's all kinds of fun activities to try out. Partner Dosado. All of a sudden she just feels hands there and it might kind of scare her a little bit. So be sure just to come up to their shoulder first, then they're usually okay with you coming up to their face. Horseback rides leave from the ranch a couple times a day and the Wranglers will give you all the encouragement you need just in case you're a little scared. It's a lot of fun. A lot of people, um, they're first time beginner riders and they never rode a horse before. So it's really fun kind of getting them comfortable with it and then seeing them have fun with it too. And everyone's kind of from all over. So there's a big diversity in the groups. Well, unfortunately, all good things must come to an end. So our road trip ends here, but there's a few final important impressions to leave you with. I think that anybody that has a chance to see these mountains and to participate in either fishing or boating or anything else, I think it's a great opportunity for them. I think we'd probably all be a little bit shocked for to find out how many Americans really know a country like this exists. You know, they talk about going to Europe and every place else, but how many of them have really seen America? And a, and a guest ranch is an excellent way to see it the way it should be seen. So dude ranches bring people out. I mean, if you're a real dude ranch, you have unspoiled country, whether it's public lands or national parks or your own or a combination of all those, you get this really unspoiled experience wrapped around the horse with Western hospitality all around you. And you get to, to go where the cowboys were and where those ranchers pushed cows a hundred years ago and where windmills were the only source of water. And, and this is the one last option to experience that. Whether you need travel accessories, oh, that's not, sorry. <laughs> so upset, that's not the word. <laughs> okay. Thank you. So, uh, why am I here? To carry all your equipment. What else? <laughs> cool, which is heated, as you can use it all year round. And we've got our redwood hot, what? Sorry, it's cooking. Indoor bed. Indoor bed. My name's Ted Tiger, non union. But we're slating, right? <laughs> Coming up, unless I don't uh -oh. have, have it plugged in. Plugging in is good. This is where all of our complimentary beverages live. Okay, I'm sorry. I can't. Live. Okay. Live. 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 Live.
No matter where you are on the ranch, you'll know when it's meal time. <laughs> you can't do your sour face. <laughs> you can't look like that. You saw me whip the worst thing you've All right, this is uh, behind the scenes footage here, people. Just so you guys can see how it all happens, how the magic all comes together. So I'm going to record something right now. Don't mess me up here, okay? Well, I can only do this 3,000 times. The evenings are extra fun. Back at the ranch, you can drink whiskey at the bar, try your hand at Texan Pulse. Ah! <laughs> Screwed up. All right, stay tuned. I'm not gonna mess it up this time. The evenings. Take three. The evenings are extra fun. Back at the ranch, you can drink whiskey at the bar, try your hand at Texas Hold'em or Faro, Wyatt Earp's favorite card game, or dance the night away to live music offered a few times a week. I mean, that was good. I, I crushed that. Woo!